It's autumn. I'm alone with my canoe in the Canadian wilderness on day one of a trip. This is my nirvana. But I know that the long shadow of winter is crawling closer, and this will be my last big trip of the season. Through the months of soft water, my canoe makes freedom and peace abundant, and I know I'll have to live on smaller rations of these privileges for the next half year. This makes every moment of this trip precious as I try to squirrel away acorns of this bliss in my mental soil. What I'm seeking on this route is something to challenge me, something that I'll remember. I'll need those memories to fill the void when my canoe is deep in hibernation. Whatever I'm granted out of this final harvest, I'll be grateful. I got to the launch around noon today and put a 20 kilometer dent into the trip, which is a good start for a half day. And it already feels pretty remote here. It feels pretty wild. And uh, I'm really just scratching the surface. I'm on the small island on Berger Lake, but what's to come is, is really a lot more wild. Once I start putting rapids behind me, I think I'll be into some water that doesn't get seen too often. And I'm eager to do that, to get into that wild area. So I'm going to cook up dinner and hit the hay to, to wake up really early at first light and get a good start for tomorrow. Great start to the trip here on Berger Lake. Really nice little site. Just how you want to start off. Sausages are almost done. And I'm hanging over here with the tarp pitched really lofty so that if there are any northern lights on this trip, I'll be able to see them without even getting out of the hammock. Just wake up, turn over, and look, look north. On the water at first light, off to a good start today. I'm through Berger Lake and back on the Capitaconga River. And here's a look at the map. I've got a bunch of maps for this trip. Here's an overview at New York, Montreal, Toronto. And this route is way up here, well north of Lake Superior and Lake Nipigon. And then as a more zoomed in overview, I started there. Yesterday I paddled to here, to Berger Lake. Today I'll be continuing down the Capitaconga River, where I'll be going for a while, down to Capitaconga Lake. Here is where there's that nearly two kilometer bushwhacker portage over to the Ogoki River system, Ogoki Lake, and then upstream on the Ogoki and then Otter Tail Rivers. Back to the road and back to my car. So, got a long way to go. I'm looking forward to it though. Information on this route is pretty limited. I've got these maps, section maps from Rob Haslam, which will take me to Capitaconga Lake with uh, pretty good information. And then from there, there's a lot less. Connecting via that portage is really unknown. And the Ogoki River, I got a bit of information from Andy Runkold in the States. If that portage fails, I have a completely different route in this map set. And then there's another route off of that. So there are options if this fails. I was actually on the Cap River two years ago you know, on the Marshall Lake Loop and it had such an incredible trip. So big moose, bear, big pike and amazing walleye fishing. 
So this is a similar but even more remote trip. So I'm quite excited for what's to come. Covered about 20 kilometers this morning and the first rapid is just around the corner. I've got to look at it already. It looks pretty small and tame, so should be no problem to run it, I hope. It's just gonna go up there and scout it first. Yeah, had a quick look and it's very straightforward. Nice easy start. The next portage on the map is a 900 meter, which Rob says is a must use. And it's tempting to like go down a rabbit hole. It looks runnable here, this first set, but apparently the rest of it is a bit of a canoe killer. So luckily I just saw that sign through this brush here and it caught my eye. So I'm gonna check it out. Looks pretty decent, better than I expected so far. So I'll use that happily if it's in decent shape. Onto the trail with a full belly and so far so good. Just like it's encroaching. Of course, everything grows in, it reaches for sunlight, but no major deadfall yet. So this isn't the 900 meter portage that I thought it was. This one's like 165 or so. And it's not quite jiving up with my map. So gonna be some uh, figuring out of things. Found what I'm sure is gonna be the 900 meter portage, even a sign down there. Anyway, here we are. Should be all good. Oh, trail's pretty overgrown, but uh, certainly usable. And there's an old trapper's cabin here. That's cool. Massive spruce here. Ooh, that's, that's ugly. Uh, just sawed my thumb. Mm, clearing trail here. Ah, uh, dang it. Just keeping some moss on it for now while I walk back to my gear to get first aid. Can't really see it, but it, it cut pretty deep. It's pretty ugly. Almost there with the last load. I'd be glad to get back to the end. The rapid goes like this for quite a ways. It'd be a really tough run. Through the 900 meter portage, which was actually 800 from the real start point. And I'll fish it here briefly. I've only had a few small pike on so far, so nothing meaningful. Feels good to have that one done though. Uh, that was kind of a question mark for me, the status of that portage, but it was in pretty usable shape. I did an hour of clearing on it, and now it's quite good. Could still use a little more, but after cutting my thumb, which I just, I just bandaged it and then put duct tape around it. The skin was still there, so I just like smushed it back down and I think it'll heal faster. I uh, sanitized it as well, but yeah, all good. On to the next. On to the next rapid. No portage marked on the map around it, so I'm assuming it's runnable. And from my scout, it looks pretty good, so. I'd love to not portage, that's for sure. I only scouted from back there, but felt confident enough from there. Yep, all good, beautiful. And a campsite should be getting pretty close now, which is perfect timing, because I'm actually pretty spent. Surprising. Hasn't been that long of a day, but I'm feeling it.
Here's camp for the night. I would barely know it's a campsite, um, if not for the cut logs, but I don't even see a fire pit. But some signs of use and it'll do for night for the night for sure. Non calzones on the menu tonight, and uh, for an appetizer, a little sip of scotch. Beautiful night to be in the woods here. Very nice temperature, sun filtering through. And there are some bugs. This warmth has brought back some October mosquitoes and black flies, but nothing to worry about really. Canoeing isn't just a hobby to me. It's not a pastime, nor just a passion or an interest. It's a part of me, wound around and within me, like twine holding my fleshy seams together. There's a sense of anxiety as the season ends. I ache for a canoe trip through the long Canadian winter. Being apart for so long, it hurts. I've come to embrace winter, but when my boots hit hard water after the first deep freeze, I can't compare to the moment I first sink my paddle into water in spring. I try to stay in the moment here at the end, but at times I can't suppress these thoughts as I feel autumn slip through my fingers yet again. The good thing about losing daylight hours is it kind of forces you to rest. Uh, just had an amazing 10 hour sleep in the drama. Just incredibly comfortable. Slept like a baby angel. Nice calm morning here, brewing a pot of coffee since I have some time. Yesterday I packed up and started in the dark. Uh, I can't do that today unless I want to run rapids in the dark, which obviously I don't. That would be really scary. So, I'm taking my time here, just waiting for the sun to come up. <sighs> Hello Mr. Squirrel. Morning. Oh, Mrs. Squirrel. Uh, sorry. It's quarter after nine, so I guess I took it a little too slow this morning. Lots of light though for running these rapids. Got the dry suit on in case I go for any unintentional swims or just for wading. I'll probably have to wade lots of rapids in this way. My clothes stay dry, which is really nice. It's cool. It's uh, unseasonably warm, but still, it's not like go in the water warm. And I've got a fairly ambitious target today to get to Cap Conga Lake, which uh, is not a huge distance, but just a lot of rapids with unknowns, you know, like, can I run them? Do I have to portage? That makes a massive difference in terms of the timeline. This is a tough one to scout. Both shorelines are really overgrown, but it looks clean down the left side. And I, there's a blind corner after that, but there's nice eddy down there. So worst case, I'll eddy out and, and see what's going on. Plus, I'm pretty certain Rob would have noted it if it was a really gnarly one. So here it goes. I'll try to take it nice and slow, considering it hasn't been scouted. But it looks really nice so far. Yep. Very nice. Really nothing to avoid. Except at the end here, it uh, turns up, but it should be good. Standing wave. Yep. Alright. Sweet. Good start. Eddie out here, see what's around the corner. I think that's pretty much it. Yep. Carry on on my way. Beautiful. Hmm. This one has a lot going on downstream. 
a lot of trees and rocks. But again, very difficult to scout with the shorelines here. Just gonna ease my way down, see an eddy up in the middle there. Took a little water on, on that last rapid at the standing wave. But I do have a makeshift spray deck, or like spray deck for the front half of the boat that I can use if need be. Basically duct tape and some tarp. <laughs> so good here. Yep, okay. All good. This is slow. Looks like another clean run. Standing waves at the bottom. We'll just scoot off to the side of them. Since there's not much rocker in this boat. Rocker is that flare at the back and front of a boat. And rocker helps keep waves and standing waves and rapids from coming over the gunnels. So without that, I can get a lot more water in the boat. It's nicer just to steer off to the side of the standing waves. Again, just trying to get on the outside of these standing waves. And get away from that big rock there. Wider than I thought. This one sounds a little beefier and goes around the blind corner with looks like no eddy to, to check it out down there. So I'm going to scout this one. Uh, Rob said he ran it the other party with him. Uh, they, they lined around the side. So I'm just going to give it a look here before I get too cocky. Looks good here coming around the corner but it still continues on a little ways. I'm gonna go farther up and check that out. Looks runnable to this point though. Looks pretty good at the bottom too. Bit of a blind spot there, but it looks just like standing waves. I'm going for it. Here we go. I don't have a defined line. I'll just be reading it as I go down. I just know a couple of things that I have to avoid. All right. Just went over that rock. Just cleared it, but I didn't see it. All good. Ground. <laughs> Slow this thing down. To the right here, it's a big rock. Another one. Oh boy, this looks like chaos down here. Over to the left channel here, the right, there's not much water. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that one caught me over the gunnel. Lots of water coming over the gunnels. And I'm close to the end and I can dump it all out. All right, here we go. Yeah! 
That was awesome. Oh. All right, I got some uh, bailing to do here. <laughs> Fantastic. Almost done bailing. Repaired my bandage as well. It came off there in the rapid. Thumb's doing pretty well. And I wanted to challenge myself on this trip and that's exactly what I had in mind. Just pushing my limits a little bit with white water each more I get a, each time I get a chance. It's, uh, it's the only way I'll improve. It's a little scary sometimes, but especially when you're alone in a very remote place, no one's gonna come by and help me here. I do have the SOS button on the Zolio, so I, I have that peace of mind, but sometimes you don't have much time. But eventually you know what you're safe doing, where you, what you're comfortable doing. There were no holes on that run either. It was really nice, like no, nothing that would really trap you. So, yeah, a great run. I did almost blow it right away though. That often happens, like if I'm gonna blow it at any point, it's usually right off the bat when I'm looking down river, um, complacent about the start of the rapid. So, something to keep in mind for myself. down. Okay. Beauty. Plowing through this. Should be no problem to get to Cap Lake for tonight. And then I can start inspecting that nearly two kilometer portage, which is probably the biggest wild card for this trip. At the next portage, which surprisingly is signed. I don't know if Rob and his group brought through signage, but up here I certainly don't expect to see any signs. Another very usable trail, some blazes, some flags. They're all growing in a little bit, but they're all very usable. Which is a lot better than I expected. Oh, slippery rock. Oh my. Oh yeah. That portage brought me to the end of that rapid. Now back right into another one. Took the dry suit off just because it's too hot in the sun, especially clearing portages. There's some big beautiful marshes off the river. Sometimes I just stick my nose in looking for moose or caribou, caribou, woodland caribou are also possible up here. If you've never been to the north, you might wonder what these yellow trees are. They look like spruce that are dying or something. They're just tamarack. Tamarack are conifers. They produce cones, but they're deciduous. And they drop their needles in the fall and turn beautiful yellow. Sometimes referred to as the golden encore of fall colors. We don't get the red maples and all that up here in the boreal forests. There just aren't those hardwoods. But we get the tamaracks and they are spectacular. It's a tenant lake and it's stunning. Most of us live in such populated places, even small towns, like you never really feel alone. And there's such a beauty to this feeling of aloneness out here. I kind of love it. Need it in doses. There were times in my life when I thought I could just live out here forever, just see my family now and then. 
but uh, no, I've, I've learned that's not the case. You do need, at least I do need people sometimes, but it's beautiful to be out here alone. Second cast here, just another small pike. I haven't even bothered filming them lately, uh, so far on this trip because I figured they'd be better, but surprisingly tough bite on the rapids. I figure the fish, they must have flushed out into the lakes and now they're, they're residing more in the deeper water, getting ready for winter. Despite this, this warm spell, there have been some frosty nights already, so that might have sent the fish searching for deep water. My hopes are still high for the fishing on this trip though. I think uh, the yoki is gonna be pretty interesting. So, lots of time left. On Rob's map, Tenant Lake has this old outfitters camp here labeled. And I figured old meant like dilapidated, no longer in service. But uh, much to my surprise, there was another boat there. Uh, a couple nice guys from Ottawa. Moose hunting. It's kind of like I love the solitude, but it's nice to see someone have a chat at the same time. I'm hoping to make this little island home for tonight. Found just enough space on this island to get the hammock up, which is great because it's getting to that time of day where if, I, if it didn't work out, suddenly it's getting dark and I haven't found camp yet. So I'm happy about that. The uh, portage, that two kilometer portage, hopefully is just over there. I'm hoping there'll be something for me to build on tomorrow. And I'm gonna set up back in there. I was pretty close to leaving this island because of how thick the trees are. But I'm really glad something worked out here because this is pretty sweet. Maps ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day where I find out if this fruit's possible or if, if this two kilometers is a complete rat's nest. One person alone with power without power tools is it's just too much of a job. I know that from experience. If that's the case, I continue down the cap and on onto a different route. I'm excited to find out. Got all my firewood prepped last night. Just so nice to have that in the morning. Cool morning, speed up your schedule. Got a big pot of rotini this morning with rehydrated pasta sauce and veggies and lots of cheese. Fueling up for this portage. I'm excited to get there and see if this is viable. I really hope so. Another dreamy morning and the weather's just been too good to be true so far and it is about to change. Tonight's supposed to turn to rain and then the next four days the weather icon on my SATCOM device shows rain, 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 rain. So that's that's more to be expected in October so I'm not complaining. Uh, I had an amazing downstream adventure on the cap. Really enjoyed the white water. It was exactly what I had hoped for. And the rest of the way 
I'm uh, going into the wind instead of with it. Upstream. Oh, fish on, I think. Assuming so. Can't be snagged out here yet. <laughs> but yeah, into the wind, upstream, and with rainy weather. So things are about to change. Small pike. Yeah, perfect. Coming into the bay where this portage is, or was supposed to be at some point. Don't see anything yet. Just looking for a bit of a hole in the bush, cut log, an old flag, but it's not promising. I'm going to get out on land here, bring my saw, and hopefully intersect the trail. Not looking good so far. This is the kind of forest that there's no way I can clear on my own. I'm going to have to find the trail. Just came through that thick stuff into this more clear area. This gives me hope. Look at this. Look at this. This is why I fully scout before I even think about starting to clear anything. Oh, yes. Oh, this is amazing. I'm thrilled. This looks good. Looks like a legitimate trail. Not a ton of use, but enough. Amazing. Yes. Beautiful in here. Lots of Labrador tea. And these big bunches of berries are mountain ash. They ferment and then the, uh, they stay on the branch all winter. And then the spring and late winter, the birds can get quite buzzed off of them. I had pretty much lost hope for finding a trail. I had zigzagging all around the bush for a good half hour. I hadn't found a thing. So I was, I was committed to just bushwhacking through here. I was just going to bulldoze. And I couldn't be happier that I don't have to. Some pretty fit, fresh wolf scat. Very fresh. Still looks like soft, yeah. Oof. Well, so I took out over there and I paddled right past this, but it doesn't look like much. As I walk over that wolf poop again, I just, I just looked back. I had this feeling like something was coming behind me. Nothing there. As I turned my head back, the scariest creature in the woods, the roughed grouse, a little bird, chicken of the forest. When it takes off, its wings beat like thunder. <laughs> My heart's pounding. I'm a little bird. Here's one. Yes. Felt that. 1.7 kilometers, 1.75 kilometers. Here, the first load, another 1.75 kilometers to get back to the second load and repeat over three miles total distance into this small lake. And uh, I still need to get to the next lake, Kaedon Lake which connects to Ogoki Lake, but I'm not really sure how to do that yet, but the worst of it should be over. So on Rob's map, here's Cap Lake. He had this pink line kind of indicating where a portage would be, a hypothetical portage, into this lake. And now I'm here and I need to get up to Kayadin Lake here, and then Ogoki is up here on the next map. There's a little creek that flows into Kayadon, and I'm hoping that that is gonna take me through. 
If not, there's a trail through this lake, so there's got to be a trail through. But a navigable creek would be very ideal. Just paddling down to the other end of the lake, to that creek, scanning the shoreline for any sign of a trail, but again, haven't seen anything. So, fingers crossed for the creek. Seems to be the end of the road. Well, I guess I'm just gonna walk along the wetland. Hopefully it's all solid. It's uh, another kilometer to Caden Lake. I usually take my big pack out when, line, when uh, lifting over a beaver dam. Just because it creates like a teeter-totter. Don't want to put needless stress on the hull. The ground is solid, so that's a win. And obviously it's wide open, so. It'd be an easy walk. I could even, whoa, line the canoe along the creek, but honestly, it might take, I don't know, I might try that. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, sometimes these little crooks in the, in the creek make it so the canoe is too long to get through straight. But I just left the light end around. It's going pretty well. I was just using the one line before on the front of the boat. When I could jump over the creek, it was very narrow and I could change the angle. But now I've got two on. If I pull the back closer to me, it'll turn the boat out that way. And if I want to turn to the left, then obviously I just pull the front. So that creek converges with another one, which flows into Kaedon, and there's enough water to paddle now. About 400 meters left to the lake, and that'll be a watershed moment for this trip. Quite literally, black flies are surprisingly strong. You might be able to see it. There it is. Kaedon Lake on the Agoki River system. Made it. So I just came in down there, and then this whole section down here is Kaedan Lake. And then that's all Agoki Lake and the Agoki River. So I'll see how far I get today. It's definitely graying up, and uh, I'm pretty tired already. So I'll check, I'm gonna check the Zolio, my SATCOM device, and see how much time I have before it's supposed to start raining. And uh, I think, yeah, I'll just try and set up before it starts raining. That'll be my cutoff today. Oh, pretty decent walleye. Yeah, nice walleye. Not bad at all. Thanks, buddy. I do want to keep one soon, but uh, not that one. When I'm low energy like this, it just it feels like so much work. I'd love it if I was with someone to share that load. Got it trolling on the husky jerk. Uh, barbless hooks came right out in the net. Beautiful thing. Never fails to delight me. Yeah, and if, if I knew it, there was a good campsite coming up, I'd, I'd be more inclined to keep that, but from this point on, I have very little information. No information about campsites, so yeah, I have no idea where I'm sleeping. Oh, fish on! Wow, a good spot. Just, uh, just cast it out again. What do we got? Small pike. 
Well, I guess I'm uh, having my fish dinner because uh, this pike took the hook badly. To release it, it probably wouldn't survive. I just grabbed a rock on the bottom here. I've drifted up shallow. Put him out of his misery immediately. Thank you. He took the, the lure quite deep. And uh, yeah, he was hooked down in the gills. I could see blood coming out of him, so that's never a good sign. And then these red fleshy gills here, I'm gonna cut them and just let the blood run out of the fish a little bit. Thanks for cleaner fillets. I really don't want to cook this thing in the rain, so while I have the chance, and the, because there's so much dry wood here, just pulled up on this rock. I'll cook it up quickly. It's gonna be good. In addition to providing lots of nice firewood, this tree has provided a nice cutting board. Got my fillets here. Fillet number one. There's the back strap. It's a nice piece. Season this fish, I've got some wild grasses and flowers. Just kidding, I've got batter. And I'm doing it caveman style. Oh, it's probably getting too hot. Season in the hand. No dirty dishes. And then the pot, the pan, I should say, I just boil some water in it after. And everybody's happy. Mmm. Now, I'm happy that I was forced to keep that pike. Some lemon pepper uh, batter. I love it. Just bought a new bag of it. First time I tried it, but I love the lemon pepper. And I chunk up the fish just because it's so much easier to manage in the pan and easier to season too. Like a healthy coating of, oh my. Ooh it's just a little black, it's still good, it's still good. Okay, handful of meat, and it's gonna be good. Oh yeah. Oops. Ample seasoning, high heat, golden brown fish. Beautiful. Okay. Mmm. Oh. Mmm, that's good. Started spitting, so I scrambled to get everything packed up. That was delicious, and I'm having some dehydrated pineapple slices. These are our favorite for dessert. Just what the doctor ordered. Got that done in record time. Just rain starting up. And I'm looking for camp. First nice spot, really nice spot. I still have several hours of daylight, so there's no huge rush, but the sooner the better. This incoming front has certainly turned on the fish. Another nice walleye. Well, Quick show. Whoa! Oh. Thanks for the bite, buddy. Coming out of Kaedin Lake and just about to come into Goki Lake. The Goki River runs right through it. I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually quite a lot of current here. Bit of a treadmill. Wow. It's a big lake. Yeah, the fishing is greatly improved here on the Agoki system. And small pike, as I hoped. Could just be the bar barometer as well. Fish like to feed when the barometer is falling. 
Parametric pressure is falling. And that is definitely what's happening here. Oh! There. Yeah, this is more like it. Hopefully home for the night. Just got the tarp up right away. Never know when this rain's gonna start dumping. And we've got just an incredibly beautiful spot here. It's like ancient looking spruce forest grove. And an incredible view. I'm on an island right in the middle of Agoki Lake. Getting a bunch of sticks prepped for the six stove for tonight and probably tomorrow morning as well. Got a nice flat rock for the stick stove. This gets so hot, especially after it's been burning for a while that uh, it can burn a fire down into the ground. So much safer this way. A little comfort food, a couple of calzones. I was gonna put on a pot of tea. Maybe I will. I'll just, I'll see how I feel. I'll put it on, but I'm so tired. I really just wanna go to bed. That portage took a lot out of me, apparently. Had a great day. Got fishing back on track a little bit. Found that portage, it was usable. Got through to the Agoki system. It was a great day. Yet again, four days, and I couldn't have asked for better result, better luck. A lot of coffee going there. Looks like the rain came overnight, which is awesome. Rehydrating some uh, apples and bananas. Yeah, and I just mix that in with my granola and powdered milk. All packed up in here and ready for the Ugoki River. It's not too far away. It's a dreary morning, but eerily beautiful too. So I camped there on this island in the middle of Goki Lake last night, and I'm on my way to this delta at the outlet of the Goki River. Dead calm. Look at this. Mosquitoes, black flies, and mayflies. Poor little guy was swimming in the water. Looked like he was trying to make his way to my boat to get rescued. I couldn't help but pick him up. What say you? Small pike. Flip them off here at the boat. Lightly hooked to Oops. Alright. One sec, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for the bite. Goodness, hundreds here.
Yeah, there must have been 200 geese, Canadian geese, that just flew off. Here in the delta, there's this huge marsh where the river, the Goki River, meets the lake. And I'm just about to start into the river. Another old trapper's cabin here at the delta. This one was pretty well equipped at some point. The appliances. Roof's going in. Broken down sled in the back. And a junkyard. This feels more solid. Haven't had a look at it yet, but it's staying down. That's always a good sign. Yeah, decent wallet. Oh. Chunky, it's got a nice belly on it. Sorry, not much of a luck. <laughs> Try to hold them gently for release. That's why they flop out of my hands. Two casts later. Oh, another pretty nice walleye. Good walleye fishery in here. Yeah, a little better than the last. Pretty nice walleye. Thanks, buddy. Amazing action here. I actually just, I cast that one out. Went to adjust my... Um, my paddle so it wasn't flopping around. And when I picked up my rod, there was a fish back on. Again, feels solid. Yeah, another two pound walleye. I'm just gonna release it right here. Thanks, buddy. Another walleye, another nice one. What a nice hole. Really chunky. Oh, this would be good eating. All right, well, we'll keep a fish or two more on this trip, but uh, I can't stop every time. Just don't have the time. Gotta keep moving. Thank you. This could be the best walleye hole I've ever experienced. Just nonstop, meaty walleye. Another guy. Look at that, that's a nice chunky walleye. And just cast them to one spot, really. Thanks for the bite. One more cast to this hole, and then I gotta move on. Oh, I didn't get anything on that last cast, to be honest, but then there were a couple more last casts after that. Just a nice, another nice walleye. Look at that, that might be the chunkiest one yet. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, moving on. It's hard to leave, but there are gonna be a lot of pools on this river, and I've got about 85 kilometers to go upstream, so there'll be a lot more. Just enjoy each one a little bit. Next pool, 100 meters upstream. Second cast, as soon as my lure hit the water. Oh, just broke me off. Dang. I always wonder what it was when that happens. It's another nice thing about barbless. I hate losing lures, mostly for the fish's sake and to leave a lure in the water eventually, but at least with barbless, it will fall out as it thrashes around. A lot of treadmills like that going upstream. Finally found a good spot to have lunch here on some exposed rock. The shoreline's been pretty mucky and full of 
shrubs and dogwood, not too easy to access. And everything's still really damp from the rain, but gonna get a nice warm fire going and put on a pot of chili. Feels pretty remote here. It is remote. But this is pretty far north, big river, and I'm hopeful that there are gonna be some animals walking along it. Animals use rivers like corridors, and this one's quite nice for walking along if you're a moose, let's say, so keeping my eyes open. Thanks, buddy. Well, this is a first. I got bit off, like so. Hello? Yeah, another dilapidated cabin. This one's got a pretty creepy vibe, I gotta say. Stovepipe looks new, but the roof is out. Yeah, I don't even want to go in, honestly. It's, it's got a vibe. Hello? Don't be something creepy. Okay, cool. Wow. Locked. Hmm. There's a door over here. Wow. It smells like a crypt in here. It is creepy. Look at that, there's mold and moss growing on the floor. Yeah, it smells like death in here. It smells kind of like a funeral home. I'm getting out of here. Call me a wuss if you want. That place had a Blair Witch vibe to it. He's getting wet. Even though I have my dry pants on, it's still nice to keep things as dry as possible. Found some. Go on. <laughs> Doesn't like those ones. All right, buddy. Well, I gotta go. a world-class wildlife fishery. Thanks, buddy. Sun's busting through. What a treat. It's getting close to dinner and I'm looking for camp. There's a big section of about five, Andy says, five kilometers of tough walking with current and drop, lots of lining and waiting. So I'd like to start that tomorrow. It's too late in the day to get, to get into that now. And there aren't a lot of camp, camping opportunities here, so I'll be keeping my eye out and picking the next nice thing that comes along. Another nice one. So meaty. That is a thick... Oh, there you go. Thanks for the bite. That's a chunky walleye. Pulling up to what I hope is camp. And Fashan. Had to be a couple dozen fish since this morning. Uh, not too much bigger than the rest. Thanks, buddy. It's getting super dark ahead. Hope I can get camp up before it starts raining.
Packers home for tonight with just a little daylight to spare, which is always nice. Thought I might be cooking in the dark. Big pot of veggie curry. It's nice doing veggie dehydrated meals because that's what you can't get out here. Vegetables, meat, there's fresh meat from an unlimited supply here. Crazy good fishing today, just as I hoped on the agoki. Looking forward to the rest. A lot of sticks snapping in the woods behind me. Nothing big. It's probably just the beaver that I'm camped like right beside. Beavers are nocturnal, so I'm sure that's what it is. Nicer walleye so far. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> another one just a minute later. And another meaty walleye. Fishing in the dark like this is kind of cool. Well, first light anyway. The water is so dark you can't see the fish until the last second, so it's kind of exciting. have to stop fishing if I want to get anywhere. Another walleye, like carbon copy of most of the others. There you go, it's perfect, okay. It's just, it's hard to not fish with the thought that there could be just some absolute giants in here. And I might never be back here, you know? It's hard not to take the chance. two fish, just look at the gut on that fish. Just thick. That's funny. I sized up to the six inch paddle tail to try and get a bigger fish, and I get the smallest pike of the trip. <laughs> Eagle just flew off there, and there's a massive nest up in the tree. About to start uh, lining or wading re these rapids. Small rapid, easy to walk up, easy to line. Uh, it's pretty bony, so I think I'll actually wade it, get it in the water. With my dry suit on here, just easier to maneuver around all the rocks. I'll have this thing gun up all the way, so I better not go over my waist. It would be a wetsuit. It's turning sunny, rain overnight. My luck continues. One thing I have to keep in mind when I'm wading up rapids is uh, the possibility of drowning because my foot getting stuck in the rocks. If my foot gets lodged in the rocks and I lose my balance. If my foot's up here and the pull current's pulling the rest of my body down, so even though I'm, it's only, let's say, waist deep, I could still be underwater and just getting overpowered by that rapid while my foot's stuck in the rocks. So something to be kept keep aware of, and uh, I just try and make sure I have a really good foothold before I take my next step. Watch my rod tip dip here. Probably only a matter of moments till the next bite. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Unbelievable. Probably the best walleye fishery I've ever experienced at this point. Like I'm not even I'm not even trying. 
Um, and <laughs> just because I'm catching all these fish doesn't make me a good angler. It's easy fishing here, really. Just clawing for every inch. Oh, I can't make it over this section here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait that one. Oh. huge black bear up the river. Hopefully he might not even be aware of me yet. I hope when he if he becomes aware of me he leaves. Beautiful to see though. Yeah, bear. Sleuthing down the river. Looks like a pretty sizable one from here. I've never had a bear incident, but it's a first for everything. Yes, okay. That's the way. That was great to see. Hopefully he's scooted off into the bush. If he's coming down the shoreline, then I'm on that shore and he'd be getting close, but I suspect he ran off. I'll wait on the far shore just to give us both breathing room. If, if anything, startling a bear. Like if he comes out of the bush and I'm right here, you know, that could lead to an issue potentially. He'll probably run away, but you never know. And then of course being careless with food. Those are the only things that should ever lead to a bear issue. And otherwise they just run away up here. They get spooked by you, they don't know what you are. 99.9% .9 of times a bear is gonna run away up here. Seems like it's gone. Feels like there's a lot going on here now. Trying to paddle and, and wade up these, looking for the bear. Again, nothing should happen with the bear, but you have to respect the possibility. Finally threw the first set of rapids, threw my line in again. And by first set, I mean probably several kilometers. It took a long time. Oh man. Yeah, this is probably the nicest so far. Walleye. Needy. Hooks out. Gotta love it. Look at that. Nice fish. Thanks, buddy. I can't imagine how many fish I, I walked over in the uh, in the rapids there, but I gotta make progress. I'm, I'm already feeling like I'm behind. I thought this would take me eight days. Now I think it'll for sure take me nine. Maybe more. Not making anywhere near the progress that I hoped, but doing my best. Another very wet fire. Just fueled up with some burritos for the rest of this section and might be kind of a dinner too. It's supposed to be potentially a storm tonight, this evening. So I might not be able to cook. It might just not be worth cooking. Probably rather get in the hammock at that point and have a cliff bar or something. Gonna be tired at the end of this one.
Slow going. Another eagle. So I camped around there and just came up this stretch here. And that was quite nasty. On the topo there are no rapids marked. But then, up here, huge cluster of rapids, two of them, around Moose Jaw Lake, and he told me it's locally called. So, I wonder what those are gonna be like. If nothing there even warranted being marked as a, a rapid on the top of Next ones might be rough. Just heard the first thunder. It started raining, but stopped quickly, so. I hope I get a bit more time. This. Oh, another nice walleye. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Thank you. Just got dark and really calm. So I think the storm is almost here. I was trying to find somewhere before this hit and everything I've looked at is just too bushy. Couldn't even get a tarp up. It's too thick. Pretty cool spot here. Unique. There's a big like wetland out there in the middle of the river. Some moose or caribou tracks here. I'll get up in these spruce woods there. Always a good feeling to be saddled up in the hammock under the tarp, especially after today. That was the hardest day for sure. Just getting up the river, up the current, paddling like a madman, or wading and hauling the canoe. Um, yeah, that was by far the hardest day so far, but still a good one. Got to see that bear, that was awesome. And now I'm dry. If I had stopped 30 minutes sooner, I was thinking about it, but I got too picky with my campsite, so. Uh, set up in the rain, but not too bad. All good now. Oh, I'm getting a message from Aaron. The sweetest sound in the world. Check in with her every night. I've gotten into the habit of using, there's a check in button on it as well. And I've gotten in the habit of using that uh, throughout in the morning just to let her know. I made it through the night, all good. And then uh, uh, kind of midway through the day. If, uh, if something did happen to me, having that last known location uh, would be huge if for some reason I couldn't communicate. Let's say I dumped and lost all my gear, including the Zolio, which should never happen with my system, but Murphy's Law. So uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a good thing for her to know where I am periodically throughout the day. That storm blew over just before sunset. Now there's a rainbow in this incredible scene.
drums pretty hard last night. A lot of rain, heavy thunder and lightning. But again, it came overnight. But it is, uh, the dampness is creeping into my kit. Everything is starting to feel a little damp after three nights of rain. Tonight might stay dry and that would give everything a chance to dry out. And the daylight hours are so short that I don't really have time to dry things during the day. I'd have to stop really early, so. Um, hopefully I can dry out at some point. All those misty skies are giving me misty eyes. It's looking like nothing but gray. Still gonna be a lovely day. Oh, gonna be a lovely day, lovely day. Shut up, I said. Here's a trivia fact. Did you know that black flies are susceptible to STIs? They're particularly vulnerable to the clap at the first of those quote unquote big rapids on the topo map. And it's like probably less than what I went through yesterday, which had no marking on the topo map. So maybe at high water, this is raging and at high water it washes everything out down there it's possible but uh, anyway this should make things a lot easier than I expected quite a pole there so I could walk around there, but the canoe was getting ripped into the current. So I turned the canoe around back there in the eddy and then pulled the light end up first so I could lift the light end up out of the current a little bit. <laughs> it was so tough work, I'm still out of breath though. But easiest way of getting around it that I could see. I think someone more proficient with lining could line around here, but I find it extremely difficult to control the front end. So. I do what I can.
Agoki. The bounty of the Agoki. Tons of fish. Big bear yesterday and cow and calf. That was fantastic. Got a nice long view of them. Good start to today. They were amongst this huge boulder field here. And at first I thought I was seeing things. I was just thinking there, it'd be funny to see a moose in Moose Jaw Lake, which is this local unofficial name for this body of water between the two rapids, apparently, according to Andy. And yeah, they popped up right there. Eagle flying off here too. What a spot. And the rapid ahead, the second one is very bony. Should be easy to wait up, make up lost time from yesterday. Yesterday was much harder than anticipated. Today looks much easier. Next stop is Amy Falls. Been paddling for a little while. It's been smooth sailing. Aside from this uh, pretty stiff wind in my face, but at least it's flat water again. No wading, no treadmill paddling. It's been a grind to get through this headwind, but I'm just about at Amy Falls. I really have no idea what it looks like. Never watched a video of it, seen a picture, write a description or anything. It could be a glorified rapid, it could be a 50 foot fall, so I have no idea. Beautiful falls, nice trail to get around it, easy, 450 meters roughly, but very flat, well maintained, and this gorgeous sight. The hard part was getting to here to see the falls actually, try to bushwhack. Beautiful falls. It's almost dinner, so I'm gonna try and find camp soon. Black flies aren't giving up yet. Seven a.m. Day eight. Been up for two hours. I'm packed up. I've I've eaten. Putting on a second pot of coffee here to uh, await some daylight, and it's starting to rain on me. Hoping to put in a big day today. Finally, a little bit of light here. I've got coffee to go. Ah, I can still hear the falls, and I think I've got about forty kilometers left on this trip, and I'm hoping to knock off at least 25 of that today. Just 
Tomorrow I'm on the Otter Tail River and I think it's smooth sailing from what I heard but I really don't know so I'd like to get to it sooner than later. A good 20 kilometers of paddling today has brought me to the mouth of the Otter Tail River here. Trolled the entire way and this was the first bite. Crazy. And it is a small pike, I think. Yeah, it's pretty wild. No bites after such incredible action. So this is the end of my experience on the Agoki. And now, onto the Otter Tail, which I'm told is navigable. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully that's the case, because if not, it's gonna be a long trip. Thank you. So it started here, did this whole loop up to here. Now I need to come down the otter tail. This is the access road here where I need to walk five kilometers back to my car tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so here's the agoki and the otter tail. It turns into just a blue line instead of a polygon, which can be navigable sometimes, sometimes not. So I was told it is. I hope they're right. The hours of continuous paddling out here can bend me into a meditative state. In these times, I find that my canoe is a great listener. It's always given me a quiet place to talk, where important decisions would become clear. If I ever felt lost or lacking direction, my canoe pointed me back to true north. The canoe clears the clutter from my mind, and our wordless conversation flows freely. At times, the thoughts burst out from behind an emotional floodgate. Other times, they trickle out softly, but by the end of each visit with my dear friend, counselor, I always got what I needed to hear. Lots of small pike in the Otter Tail River here, and I am plowing my way through this section. I, it must have been that extra coffee I had, but uh, I, might, I might be able to get out tonight. Which, you know, if, as opposed to leaving tomorrow morning, just makes sense. So, not that I'm in a rush to leave, it's beautiful, but no sense being here just to sleep. It's a beautiful paddle down the otter tail. Um, it's hard to believe this trip's coming to an end so suddenly, and then that's kind of the end of the, the paddling season. In terms of big trips, this will be, I think, the last one. Those will be frozen up in a few weeks. It'll start free icing over and that'll be it. Um, and with that, uh, I just want to dedicate this video to Aaron. I've been away from home a lot this paddling season. Um, a week before this trip, I just finished a 12-day trip and stuff like that all summer. So um, she's just the most patient and supportive fiance that I could ever ask for. She's the best. I was hoping for a challenge on this trip, and it was kind of the, the perfect line between challenge and enjoyment. The rapids going down the cap were perfect, very enjoyable. Crossing the watersheds was a challenge, but it worked out great. And then coming up the Ogoki was the most challenging part, really. Up those rapids, that was, was pretty tough. But that was the most rewarding section of all. Incredible fishing, the bear, and then the two moose together, so. Amazing trip and, and cap to the season. Well, that's it. All that's left is the walk back to my car. Back to the bridge over the cap where I started. car is where I left it. It's always good to see. And here is my number one camping tip. Survival tip, really. 
at the end of a, a trip, always leave yourself a bag of chips in the car. Making the drive home, and I just lost something. There's the other one. I hit a washout. It was so bad. That's crazy. Luckily, I went back and checked. That's one thing I would really hate out here is needing a tow. It would be so expensive. Luckily, I have the Zolio, the SATCOM device. If, uh, if I needed to get through to Erin, then she could call it for me now. But that would suck big time. I think I'm alright though.